Moon. I think I've been here once before, many moons ago. So, we're going to have a look around. It's semi air conditioned, it's a lot cooler in here than it is outside. Nothing electric in here, I don't think, but we might get surprised. The 1974 Range Rover Royal Ceremonial. Cinema, motoring cinema. Days gone by that we won't need all these parts with electric cars, thank goodness. Never again. Oils and filters and whatever. Yeah, some of these cars in here are taking me back to my childhood, there's no doubt about it. And some of them were bloody awful. I've got to say that, we didn't make some of the best looking cars in the world even back then, but hey-ho. There was an exception to the rule now and again. This is a clever exhibit. Walk straight through a car. Far too complicated. Now there's a Nash Metropolitan. My dad had one of them years ago. Let's have a quick look. American company Nash. Uh, they were made for the British market at one time, being a right-hand drive. Very rare to find now. Why my dad had one of these, I just do not know. But he did. But again, they called it the Austin Metropolitan. I always called it the American Nash Company, that's why. Lego. Probably runs better than the original Morris Cooper did, but no, I'm being a bit too uh, bitchy there. <laughs> I can't knock the fact that, you know, people love these things, the nostalgia from it all, and yes, even me, when I come into these places, I do kind of like um, remember what it was like when we were young. Caravans, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing's changed though, has it? Uh, British caravan, got the same at the end, kitchen ears, down the side. We've not changed a damn thing in format, really. Was it a good thing for the human race with all the pollution from them and oil and everything else? I don't know. Overall, I guess so. It made us expand, didn't it? Give us some idea and format of what to do with the world and how to go forward. Here's the cars from film. T 
TVR and then you've got DeLorean sent me back to 1980s and then of course you've got Lady Penelope but he's the second generation Ford this was I believe built on the new Ford Thunderbird um, what the idea and the concept was Pretty well designed actually, it's uh <laughs> hate this obviously but yeah they're Ford Thunderbird lights I'm sure they are. Pretty sure it would have been. Yeah, there's the Thunderbird emblem. I can remember that. I don't know how many were made at all, but hey ho. This is the city cab from now what movie was this? I can't remember what movie this was. It. Should have realised that. Judge Dread movie. Jackie Stewart's Formula One. Got to be a Lotus, I guess, in that colour. Minis, which I was never a big fan of. And then round here you've got the Capri, which I've actually owned myself. Only fools and horses horrendous fur but I can remember doing this when I was a kid and one or two of my cars and then you've got trotters put a pony in it this is all about yeah, automobilia all bits and bobs all the stuff I've collected through the years but that thing there would make a great little electric car anyway We'll move on. This is the think about London. This is when they first thought about electric. Just didn't take off. Weird. Yeah. I know, wallpaper well in the 70s. This is when British Lady were making some pretty bad cars. Stairs and lifts to mezzanine gallery. Let's have a look. More me, Vauxhall. Never was a Brit British Leyland fan, to be honest. Didn't have many at all. Two or three Vauxhalls was, uh, in my younger days. This is the VXR220. This is a version that Pontiac do a version of this in America. You got the Velox, which was one of my favourites back in the day. very American in its styling probably the, the one of the cars that stand out as being probably the most American looking from Vauxhall that we ever made to be fair and then there's of course this one the smaller version of it the deluxe the Victor but they used to rot like hell these Vauxhalls Cresta again very American looking in its style in its way you can tell GM had a big influence. But they weren't the greatest things to own. They weren't very reliable. Here's a GT Viva. GT. Top speed look. 100 mile an hour. Wow. 112 brake horse. 
knew a lad who had one of these forenses, droop snoot. Rare to see on the road nowadays. That's the FE Victor, that was one of my favourites back in the day. Again, American styling across the front grille. You know. Viscount as well there, look. Superb. Get one of these and make it electric, use it on a daily. Brilliant. Brilliant. Then you've got the more modern stuff, which to me started to get a bit boring. Calibras. Full respect to the Bedford van. Then of course you had the Impera, which was the first real semi-electric car from General Motors for the European market, especially for the UK market. Hybrid, was tempted on one. There was one out there earlier on, but that was the, uh, the Volt. Then you got the Beast. The VXR8 GTSR, which again, this was sold in the US under the banner of being a Pontiac. Um, Australian in its own right, to be fair, I do believe. About four second, 0 to 60. About as quick as my Mustangs and Camaros used to be. And then the famous Lotus Carlton, which out the two, I'd have had that one, but these were quite quick in the day. Can't deny it. So that's Vauxhall. Very good. Again, I was never a big MG fan either. Still not to this day. Um, there's a prototype series of their selection here. I'm going to show you one, which really, they're a fool not to do, and they should have done it. It was like a twist between a probe and another car I can't think of, but I'll show you. MG EXE. Now I reckon, if I stand back, you'll see it from here. I reckon if they'd have made that, that would have sold. Because that's still a good looking car today. That's what I cannot understand. MG, why didn't you make that before you got took over by the Chinese? Well, they, only, they only made, they only stole your name by the way, but hey ho. And there you go. 1985. Foolish not to do it. Anyway, back to Deborah, go upstairs, see what else there is, cafe. Just thought I'd get this in because obviously Gaydon was an RAF airbase. And this is World War II. Love the gas pump. Let's have a look. Soon find out. Drink or not? Well, you're all right. <laughs> Too late. So there's the cafe. If you don't need it, well, we're not bothered. We'll get some on the way back, yeah? Cool. No, it just sends you back the same way, I think. Yeah, it's the sweets. Mm -hmm. Plenty of meeting rooms and stuff or whatever. Sky suite, I don't know what that is, but not for us. Down we go. Yeah, yeah conference rooms and everything here. Well, finally back 
ending the tour in the gift shop. Plenty of nice stuff if you're into British memorabilia and nostalgia. Collectibles, 160 quid for example. Even down to chocolate. Oh yeah, they're nice, yeah. Yeah, I like the SO ones, it brings back so many memories, that does. Put a tiger in your tank. What clever marketing that was. Yeah. Very clever marketing. The song was. Uh, yes, I saw him. Loads of key fobs, but you don't normally see good old key fobs anymore. But you don't normally need a key for modern cars. So this is the problem. <laughs> yep, plenty of stuff to pick from. Nice bits and bobs. So yes, if you ever come, pay the little uh, store a visit. So that winds this one up from Gaydon and the British Motor Museum. Mm -hmm.